Hi, I'm Cara Stanford. This is The Marketing Spaces. Thank you for making the time today to join me to find out the five marketing mistakes businesses make and how to avoid them. So hopefully you've downloaded the accompanying worksheet that goes with this webinar. We, I'm going to invite you to score yourself as you go along. This is on the worksheet, as is also space for you to make your own notes. Um, so do use that worksheet. So let's crack on. Mistake number one. Do this, Facebook, TikTok. Hey, have you done Instagram? Do you go networking? Where do you advertise? Why aren't you doing Google AdWords? What are the metrics looking like today? Did you know the algorithms changed? Do you use AdWords? Oh my gosh. Marketers and business owners, we are just bombarded every day with ideas for marketing we should be doing, could be doing, ought to be doing. The result is that it's incredibly easy to feel overwhelmed by it all. I mean, I get overwhelmed and I'm a professional marketer. Where the mistake comes in is when you just accept that being overwhelmed by marketing is the norm. It should not be your norm. It should not be your norm. Can you give yourself a score, please? How much does marketing make you feel overwhelmed? What's the solution? The solution is to replace it with calm space. You need space to think about your marketing. You need space to plan your marketing. When you've got a good thought through marketing plan in place, the strain reduces incredibly. It really does, because all of a sudden you can say, right, somebody's saying I should do AdWords. Is that going to work with the plan that I've got in place? Yes, no, easy answer. Somebody's told me I should do this or I think I should do this. This is the latest thing. Does this work? Does this help me achieve my marketing plan? Yes, no. The overwhelm becomes easier. It disappears because let's face it, marketing is always going to be involved. There's always going to be things we could be doing, things we should be doing. There's always going to be more and more and more and more. So we have to learn strategies to make sure that we can deal with it. So some help and suggestions for you. We do have a whole Marketer Mastermind Insight video series, which is on our Insights. If you go to our homepage, Insights is in the top nav bar, and you'll find one called Three Ways to Be an Even More Effective Marketer. This is a really good place to start to help you turn feeling marketing overwhelm, getting rid of that and replacing it with this calm. I'd also encourage you to come to our virtual marketing coffee breaks. They're only half an hour every second Thursday of the month, and they give everybody that attends that space to think and plan some of their marketing very calmly. Mistake number two, not having strategic marketing boundaries. So what do I mean by this? Well, let me share with you some of the symptoms I see. So the symptoms that I see are things where you're doing market tactic, marketing tactic hopping. That's where you're jumping from doing one different thing to another, where it might be, right, I'm doing AdWords, but that didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to try LinkedIn. That hasn't worked. I'm doing social. I'm doing network. It's not working. It's not working. Top, pop, 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 pop. It's where your budget and time is wasted. You're typically saying things to me like, I don't know if my marketing's worth the money. I don't know what my return on investment for that is. I've wasted a lot of time doing this piece of marketing. And your marketing is ineffective. <laughs> You're not getting the results that you should be getting from your marketing. And the reason for this typically is because you haven't set your strategic marketing boundaries. And these are boundaries that allow you to say, we are going to focus on this particular segment of the market and we are going to offer them these particular products and services. And when you don't set those boundaries, you're effectively trying to market to everyone and you're trying to offer them everything and anything to varying degrees. This doesn't work. This does not work. So when you don't have those strategic boundaries of these are the segments that we're focusing on, these are the products and services we're offering them because we know that they are the best solution for those people, you get all of those symptoms. So I would invite you to score yourself. Do you have strategic marketing boundaries in place? Put simply, do you have a strategic marketing plan? If you are scoring five, absolutely, that means you have a strategic marketing plan. You could email me right now. And I would see all of this key strategic marketing stuff laid out. Anything less than that does not get a five. <laughs> What's the solution to this mistake? Well, the solution is to set your marketing bound, your strategic marketing boundaries. Strategic marketing boundaries 
broadly speaking, cover who we are. This is who we are as an organization, as a business. These are our mission, our vision, our values. This is how we want to be known in the marketplace, our market position. This is who we're for. We are offering things to these segments of people. This is what we're offering them. These are our key solutions. And this is our overall marketing strategy, which it might be saying things like, we want to be a known expert strategy. We want to be known as the experts. That's our overall marketing strategy. We want to be market leaders. We want to be doing the type of thing where everyone else is going, oh, we've got to copy them. When you set these boundaries, it's like putting a fence around a field. It's saying, right, this is the space that we operate in. We're not going to get distracted and run over there. We're not going to distract and go over this way. We are operating within this space. And then your marketing becomes much more effective. There's some help and suggestions here of an article that I've written that would be really useful for you. And then once you've read the article, you might want to do our online course. If you're thinking, yeah, let me have at it. I want to write my strategic marketing plan. We've got an online course just for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Mistake three, an incomplete marketing pipeline. When people buy from you, it is a journey. They go through from being unaware that you, your company, your products, your services exist, hopefully all the way through to adopting, which is where they buy from you or in the case of a charity, make a donation um, to being loyal customers. And loyal is where you get recommendations, referrals and repeat business from them. But often what happens is the mistake that I see time and time again is that we don't set out that journey for them in a smooth way. So whether you call this the marketing and sales pipeline, I call it the marketing pipeline, um, the marketing journey, the buyer's journey. The point is it should flow from one step to another. It should be like a nicely laid out path where they can clearly see what you want them to do next. When you don't offer them these opportunities to move forward next, and they don't have to take them, they need to be there though, they need to be offered them, you're effectively got a broken bridge. So the classic thing that I might see is people do loads of great awareness marketing, they make the right type of people aware they exist, and then they don't follow it up. Or what they follow it up with, they follow it up a little bit and then they go, oh, I don't want to bother them. Or I don't have anything else to give to them. It's like having a broken bridge. You, you kind of set them off on the path and then nothing happens. So mistake three is having an incomplete marketing pipeline. Do score yourself. Do you have a complete end-to-end -end marketing pipeline set up? And if you have nailed it, again, you should be able to email it to me. Here's the solution that you can start right away. Walk the journey in their shoes. Pretend you are one of your customers to be. Start at unaware. Think, how do I find out that I exist? How do I find out my company exists? What do I notice? Why does it attract my attention? What am I being led to do once my attention has been attracted? Am I being invited to click on something, to comment on something, to download something? What happens when I do that action? What's the next thing I'm signposted to do? And what you are looking for is at every step, are you clearly signposted to move forward in a way that you want to move forward? Where are the gaps? When you find those gaps, fill them. Again, we've got loads of great help and suggestions. We've got some marketing insight articles on what is marketing pipeline. We've got some videos on pipeline marketing. Um, once you've watched those, you might want to look um, download our webinar series on pipeline marketing. We have three great video webinars about them. And also you can ask me about our next five week program. Depending on when you're watching this, um, we've got one starting in April, but we do run them throughout the year. So if you're watching this after April, get in touch anyway. Mistake four, measuring the wrong things. There's four things that we tend to do wrong when it comes to marketing measurements. First of all is measuring activities, not outcomes. So I'd like you to look at the top table, which is my oh, not great example. And on this one is kind of saying, right, our activity is we've done 50 social media posts in one month. Great, what does that mean? What's the outcome? Well, the outcome is we've got a thousand reactions per post. That looks really good. Now let's move on to vanity metrics. Okay, vanity metrics are those metrics that make us feel really, really good about ourselves and our marketing, but actually they're not helping in any way in that it's not progressing your marketing at all. Typical vanity metrics tend to be around social media. It's like, I've got this many followers. I've got this many likes. That can work if you're pursuing things such as you need to get so many to be able to run YouTube advertising, but typically most businesses don't need the volume. They need quality. How can you tell your poor, their poor quality? You look at your conversion rates. And that's when people forget to look at the conversion rates. So we've got 1,000 reactions per post. We published a lead magnet. Now, a lead magnet is where you offer something to your audience in exchange for their email address. 
we published a lead magnet. One person signed up for it. Whoa, what's the conversion rate? 1,000 to one. Yeah, that's not great. Let's move down to the next table, which is what we want it to be. Actually, if we reduce the activity, we do 40 social media posts per month, that's saving you time, money and effort. And we got 100 reactions per post. Hmm, that's really sad. We didn't get 1,000. But hey, look at your conversion rates. 10 people signed up for your lead magnet. 10 people. That's because you've got 100 of the right people, 100 of that segment that you're after, rather than 1,000, which could be from anyone and everything. As I always say, if you want me to get you good results on social media that are all about vanity metrics, they involve kittens, puppies and firefighters. That's how you get those vanity metrics boosted up. What you actually want is good quality people reacting to your material, the right kind of audience because you've identified them. So not looking for getting conversion rates, vanity metrics, focusing on activities rather than outcomes. But what's this about a KPI, key performance indicator? Well, you should have one for each stage. So if you remember, we have our buyer's journey up here. All of these different stages should have their own key performance indicator. And that lets you know, has this stage of marketing been successful? So again, in my basic example at the bottom, I put in, right, KPI for awareness is that we get the attention of at least 100 people in our key segment per month. So every month we know that 100 of the right kind of people who we're set up to offer the right solutions to, we're getting their attention. That is success. That is success. And when it comes to interest and we're getting people to download our stuff that we're offering them, we want to have 15 people do that per month. That's success. And when you combine all of these together, you can see it makes your marketing sharper. It means you're spending your time, your money and effort on marketing that's actually working because you're getting the right people through. You can see you've got the right people through or you can see you've not got the right people through. You've got great conversion rates, 100 reactions, 10 people signing up for it. That's a conversion of 10 to 1. That's better than 1,000 to 1. So measuring the wrong things. As you can see, I'm quite passionate about marketing measurements. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to ask you to score yourself. Are you measuring the right things when it comes to your marketing? Here are some solutions, and I've put them in the order that I recommend you tackle them. One, figure out a KPI for each stage of your marketing pipeline. Figure out what does it mean when my awareness marketing is a success? What does it mean when our interest marketing is successful? What does it mean when the considering marketing is successful? And those considering is often when people have asked you for a quote or they've actively looked and at buying your product or service, so they might have put it in their basket. Um, go all the way through, right down to loyalty. Then think, look at that KPI and say, right, which marketing activity that actually contributing towards this, they're having the greatest impact. Figure out which ones are actually working and helping you achieve what you need to achieve. And then go, what's the activity level that I need to do to have increase the impact? So it might be you're only getting two lead magnets downloaded at the moment and you want to increase that. So you want the impact to be bigger. What activity do you need to do? Does that mean that you need to post it more regularly? Do you need to change the messaging? Have a look, play around with it. And what you are aiming for here is progress, not perfection. This takes a long time to master. It really, really does. Progress, not perfection. I've got some help and suggestions for you. So, um, I actually did, I hope you wouldn't be surprised to know, I did a whole series on uh, metrics. It's called My Metrics Are Muddled Marketing Insight Videos. Again, if you go to our insights and look for um, Metrics Are Muddled, you'll find these three videos come up. <clears throat> Last mistake, mistake number five, only learning about the tip of the marketing iceberg. When we think about marketing, most of the time people think about the fun, cool, super uber sexy marketing that we see all the time. We see it as consumers, let alone as business owners and marketers having to do it. And we see the adverts, we see the socials, we see the events, we see the um, PR that comes out. We see all of this stuff. And that typically is what most people think of as marketing. They think of this tip of the iceberg stuff that they are seeing and experiencing on a daily basis. However, marketing is deeper than that. The big thing with marketing is all the things that we've talked about. It's all of that strategic marketing planning and thinking. It's understanding what you need to measure, what success looks like. It's making sure that you don't get overwhelmed. It's all of the thinking that goes on beneath the surface. 
And as business owners, it can become far too easy to just learn about the super cool, sexy, fun, grab your attention marketing and not to hone your craft when it comes to strategic marketing. So the big mistake I see businesses make is they don't focus on learning about strategic marketing. They focus on all the marketing they have to do and not on how to think about marketing. And when you could think about marketing in a structured um, positive, correct way, then your marketing becomes effective. So are you regularly honing your strategic marketing skills and knowledge? Solution, you need to build in regular practical strategic marketing learning and inspiration. Now, this is harder than it sounds. And this is why I set up the marketing spaces. I'm a strategic marketer and I get really frustrated that when I go to learn about strategic marketing, it's often set in the context of corporates, big organizations with big teams and big budgets. I don't have a big team. I don't have a big budget compared to these companies. And the people that I work with, they're in the same boat. So that's why you have to find your strategic marketing home. You have to find somewhere where can you, you are not only able to regularly think about strategic marketing, but it's relevant and practical to you, your business, your organization. And then you can start to be inspired by people that are going through the same thing as you and approaching it in the same way. When you find those places, do go back to them again and again and again. Clearly, I'm going to say that that's what we do at the marketing spaces. And it is what we do. One of the reasons I set it up was because I got so frustrated that there wasn't really good place to learn about strategic marketing as a small business owner, as an ambitious business owner. And we have workshops, um, virtual workshops you can buy a ticket for, come to. We've got online courses. We have the insights videos, the insights articles. We've got the free coffee break. We've got a really great mixture of free and paid for resources wherever you are in your strategic marketing journey. The easiest thing to do is to subscribe to our newsletter. When you're subscribed to our newsletter, you'll just get those updates and you'll get the strategic marketing advice and tips and things popping into your inbox. So let's go back to your questions because I got you to score yourself. Now, I filled in a table of some scores. Now, where do you start? How do you make this better? How do you make this better? And again, this is part of practical strategic marketing advice. So let's have a look at this. 11 out of 25, bit disappointing, would like to increase the score. Where do I start? You start with the lowest mark. And what you want to do is get everything to a three, at least a three. So I would start with one. Are you regularly honing your strategic marketing skills and knowledge? Ooh, no, I'm not. OK, what can I do to shift that to a two? It's so all you need to do. Take your lowest score, shift it to a two. Then find your next lowest scores. Well, there's two of them. So then I'll choose the one that's easiest for you <laughs> to work on and then shift that up. So what you're doing is you're slowly shifting everything up to, say, a three, depending on what you've scored yourself. Then you go back again and you start to shift everything up to a four. And then where you want to get to is a five. Don't try and do it all at once. You'll get demoralized. I suspect you've got a lot on your plate. I suspect you've got a lot to do. That's why we shift things up incrementally and then you'll start to notice the effect. It will give you more confidence. You'll start to see how your marketing is much more effective, how you're less stressed about it, how you're not wasting as much money and time on it. And it feels really good and really honed and you're getting the results. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Cara Stanford. This is The Marketing Spaces.